Hey, good morning. It's going to be another great day on the Ham Radio install. Just as a reminder, I'm trying to crank out as much content as possible. So these are these videos are a little bit longer form and they're not edited together as much. So they're just a little bit more rough, but I want to get out more content in the days to come during some crazy times. All right. Hey, I want to thank a few people that reached out on the video last night on the forums and, and over in the YouTube comments. Um, Bill, thanks for reaching out and saying um, that you will help me out once I have this installed. He's local, he's got a radio just like this, and he's willing to walk me through it. Um, Brian, thanks for all the good advice. You guys, here's Brian's YouTube channel. He's going to do a video uh, maybe this weekend on APRS. Long story short, it allows you to broadcast and receive um, positioning without relying on a cell network. There's a lot more information. That's just the high level. But Brian's going to do a video on how to configure this radio um, to Beacon, uh, APRS, and also just about APRS in general. So go check out his channel, subscribe, and he'll have that video out pretty soon. Also, hey, um, to the gentleman who reached out and said, you don't need your GMRS, GMRS radio anymore uh, because this broadcasts and receives on the same frequencies. Awesome. Thank you for that. And ham radio license. Here's a video on getting your ham radio license. There's going to be lots of links in the description for you guys to click through and get more information. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, we got plenty of stuff to talk about in the coming days, so look for more videos. Let's get to this ham radio install. And Miguel will be out here too. I just got to go wake him up. Oh, hey, <clears throat> I had one request. Uh, somebody wanted to see a closer image. They wanted to see the different pieces closer so they could see the ports and things of that nature. So here are a few um, uh, images of some close-ups of the stuff that we unboxed yesterday. Okay, so there really just aren't that many places to put this through the firewall. Um, I have one rubber grommet that has a bunch of stuff going through it already from my um, relay um, for accessories. So it's pretty packed. Uh, but I'm going to try and go through there anyway, see if I can get this to, to fit. Here's another uh, example of why you should do visual in inspection on your, on your vehicle on a regular basis. I was routing the antenna. This thing that is not attached to anything is the negative lead on my winch line. And you know, that's not critical, but clearly it got yanked and pulled it off the battery terminal. And I would have been out stuck in the mud someplace trying to get my winch to work trying to figure out why my <laughs> winch isn't, isn't working. It would have been much more miserable out there in the mud. But I guess, you know, I mean, the, the, the rigs had some hard use recently and at some point, negative ground got yanked and pulled it off the battery terminal. So I'm gonna fix that too. Hey, I was, uh, I was super happy with that. 
um, I had enough room to go through that rubber grommet. I'm going to replace that rubber grommet right where it needs to be and then I'll uh, wrap all these wires again. Um, now, I already built a relay system you guys may have seen in my other video. It's all very basic tech. They're relays and fuses and that's it. Um, and so now, because I already have this junction block here, now what I can do, because I already have this junction block, is I can get the proper rated fuses, put them in my fuse block, cut these wires, shorten it so there's not a lot of wire under the hood. I'll be able to get rid of all of that and it'll just go right here, it'll be properly fused. All right, now that I'm wired in, I'm gonna do a quick test of the radio, make sure the power comes on. Um, if you guys are wondering why I'm using old relays and fuses, it's because it's highly maintainable. Um, if something goes wrong, I can throw in a spare relay, which I carry, or I can check the fuse really easily. Uh, units like the, the Switch Pros and the S-Pods, they fail, uh, they just do. Uh, I know of four at least, and um, I, uh, you know, my, my, my good friend and our West Region Director, Bob, we were talking about it on the trail in the Mojave about a, about a week ago. I was like, yeah, you know, uh, going old school, I can carry spare relays. The next day he had a unit fail and he thought I cursed him. <laughs> but that's a fact of the matter. You could probably work around a solid state piece of gear if you had to, but it could be a big pain uh, or perhaps you can't even work around it. So I just go with standard uh, fuses and relays. It works. Remember I was talking about perfect, enemy of done. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can live with that. All right, now I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just kind of tucking things back into place where it should go. Um, I'm gonna rewrap these wires in this uh, insulating sleeve. See this nice fat wire here? This is, uh, is it three gauge, uh, four gauge? This is nice fat four gauge wire. That's for accessories in the back. The longer you run, um, an electric line, the thicker gauge you want it to be, and you don't want to skimp. You, you don't want uh, your wiring to be overloaded. Because this goes all the way to the back of the rig, it's nice and heavy gauge. All right, now, there just aren't very many places to put a radio in this 80 without it getting in the way of everything else. So, as bold as this may seem, I think the proper placement is right there. I cleaned that off with some alcohol wipes. There's a uh, clippy deal on here, so once it's positioned, once the little sticky thing is positioned, then I'm going to take the bracket off. Now, once this paper comes off, that's it. Not reusable. So I'm going to take my time here. Oh, it's got to come that way. All right. Yep, I'm just eyeballing it. That's right, folks. I'm going to take this off. Boom. Something I did kind of off camera was uh, bend this plate around a little bit so it contoured with the uh, 
with the dash. Now, time to connect some things up and uh, route some wiring. All right, now, this is where y'all are gonna call me crazy, but I want this thing right here. So I'm gonna mount it right there because I want it right by my ear. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, let me see. Boom, boom, I'm gonna throw this up here the way it should be. And then I'm gonna worry about routing wires. I like to be tidy about all my wires. Trim. Okay, that's pretty darn good. Hey, so I pulled this all apart. I, I wanna show you what I'm doing with that speaker cable before I put it all back together. Okay, so here we go. It is, it is, see I pulled the trim out. So the, the door trim, so that I can get behind that, the A-pillar trim, and then wind through the roof. I've pulled the, the sunroof trim off, and that's where the speaker cable is going to go. I'm going to go through the roof line, come out over here and then go down the A-pillar with that speaker wire. So you'll never see it. All right now, call me crazy again, but I just spent 45 minutes in this truck figuring out where to put this mic because I want it out of the way. I don't want it to encumber anything that, you know, like emergency brake, shift lever, ignition, and I'm gonna have a cable dangling around. And I didn't like where my CB was. I'm actually gonna put it right there. So this is gonna be a little bit loose. I'm gonna run the wire along the side there. And that's where it's gonna be. Ain't no big thing. Just drilling holes in a Land Cruiser. Don't hit anything, okay? Don't hit anything. Oh, good job. Game 6 YSL radio check. I actually really like where that is. Accessible to the passenger and the driver. Not obstructing anything up here, not interfering with anything like the emergency brake or the radio. Also, this is gonna sound kind of funny to you guys, but I had the CB mic in here rattling around, kind of getting in the way. And while I was installing this, I just thought, I use CB so rarely, I can just put the mic in the back. I don't have to have it up here trying to find a place for it. So I just pulled it out. It's the little things. <laughs> Fair. Okay, now this should be the fun part where we plug everything in, turn it on, and it just works. We have a radio with a loud external speaker right above my head. I should be able to hear that going down the road. Check, check, check. All right, not programmed. Now the fun begins. We get to start programming and all that kind of stuff. Pretty excited about that. All right, you guys, uh, we did it. 
We got that ham radio installed. I'm super excited. Now I get to look into programming it and getting it all set up. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Really appreciate it. Um, well, there's a piece of paper around here. Oh, I'm back. Um, some people asked why the Kenwood over the Yesu, and I asked Brian, and he has a bunch of reasons. I'm going to post these in the description so you guys can have the reasons that he uh, recommended the Kenwood over the Yesu. And again, Brian is going to have a APRS video coming out um, this weekend, hopefully. Why did the camera just jiggle? Or was that me? Anyway, um, so uh, look for that. Uh, and I've got a link to his YouTube channel um, in the description and you saw the link. All right, you guys, thanks again for hanging out. I'll try and get as many uh, videos out as I possibly can. Like I said, they're a little bit more rough because I'm trying to cut them together pretty quickly um, so I get more content out there while we're all hanging out together as an online community. I hope this was useful. Till next time, outfit, explore, and I'll see you very soon. All right, hey, I'm gonna go head over to our forums and chat over there if you guys feel like sending me a message, Michael, um, on the Overland Bound forums. Okay, take care, you guys.